Uh, we're yes, about to be. Yes. We're about to be. Hello, we? and welcome to episode four. It's number four Ooh. of Five Questions with Eric. I'm here with the phenomenal Brian Cheney. Not Cheney, Cheney. Cheesy knees. <laughs> Now, tell us uh, your voice type and what you're singing here and who, and who you're singing with. Okay, so we're with Salt Marsh Opera right now. Yes, we and are. And we are singing Madama Butterfly. You're actually Butterfly. I am Butterfly. I'm oh, Chocho-san for the wow. first time. Wow. <laughs> That's my dream role. No, uh, I am uh, B.F. Pinkerton, uh-huh. and uh, I've done it a few times before, oh, and right it's a role that uh, I absolutely love to sing, although I'm not so crazy about uh, not so crazy about the character oh, okay okay I mean, he's such a he's such a loser okay so yeah let me ask my first question yes. and this is completely related how do you as a singer and a very good person in life thank you play someone who has obviously some glorious glorious music because Puccini really knew what he was doing but how do you play this character? How do you get into his skin and justify his actions? Or do you? I mean, do you just? What do you? What did? How do you deal with it? Wow. Yeah. I'm, uh, going, I'm going deep today. We're I'm going, going deep. deep. We're going question deep. one, right? <laughs> question one. They'll they'll get easier from you. <laughs> okay. Um. I I love uh, to play characters that are not me. Yes. Um. Because it's very cathartic in a way. You, I get that. Uh, I, I, I sometimes think of, of performing as, as a form of therapy. Um, that's why we do it. That's in many ways. I mean, that's we, right. yes. Um, and uh, so I can tap into a creepy guy. Yeah. Um, I think all guys can do that. I think everybody, if they allow themselves to be open, can can tap into uh, that other side, that darker side of themselves. Um, I agree. Pinkerton is interesting. Uh, I I personally have to play him uh, not as uh, evil mm, and, and more uh, real and authentic. Yes. I think he is uh, just a very uh, simple guy doing something that all all of the sailors did mm-hmm. for fun. Yes, without thinking of the consequences. And uh, there is a moment when. He sees Chocho-san, mm-hmm. uh, and I do believe that he actually falls in love with her. Okay, good. Uh, that he is in love in the moment, mm-hmm. uh, and I think that's the only way an audience can actually sympathize and, and understand and actually go with that beautiful Act One duet. Absolutely. Because without that, it's you know it, there's not a lot of action going on. Right. We need to get everybody swept up in the in the the love right. and, the, and the exotic nature of of east and west. Yeah, and it's 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 a very uh, you know we were having this conversation I was talking to Ashley about and that people get really angry with Butterfly for being so quote unquote naive, but you have a teenage daughter who's I fifteen, do, which and, is and again, so weird. I'm sure that's very weird. <laughs> But having a teenage daughter and having people, you know, it, we see these 18, 19, 20, 25 year olds making these crazy decisions online, you know, and, yeah. the, and the repercussions of that. So obviously when you're young and you're in love and you're impulsive, it's possible to make these huge mistakes like these, like these both of these characters are making, I think. Yeah. 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 So it, it's real. It still feels very real to me. These these two characters, even though. We think they're making foolish choices. They're living in the moment. Absolutely, mm-hmm. and I think I I wouldn't for a second think that that butterfly is is uh, stupid. Okay, you know because I think um, she's a 15 year old girl right. who uh, is in this very specific familial situation Mm -hmm. and she is breaking out of it like a lot of teenagers do they they try to find themselves as individuals and exactly and sometimes they throw caution to the wind yeah but it's i it's i don't know if that's making any sense no it makes perfect it's because i want if anybody out there thinks butterfly is uh, a very a tale that's so far removed from today's society i say Think about yeah. the choices that teenagers make now, and, and you can understand it, it's really grounded in my mind in reality. And 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 both of these characters, they're you know watching the both of you 
do beautiful jobs of these characters. I believe in, I mean, as the performer and as Sharpless, I believe that you in, are, in, are really in love with her, yeah. even though there's a part of me that's like, don't do it, Sonny! <laughs> well, I think that's, yeah, right? I think that's the only way uh, the end of the opera can actually be believable. Right, right. That uh, he is actually remorseful. When he comes back, that that rush and flood of memories of what that was like, uh, even for a brief time, comes back to him. And uh, he's older, he's wiser, mm -hmm. he's realized what he's done. Right. He's completely ruined this person's life. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. yeah. So, so onto a happier question. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, Batman or Superman? Oh my God. Are we talking verses? Uh, just like, who do you think, who do you like better? Superman. Totally Superman. Okay. Why, why do you like Superman? Well, I see, I take what you just said as a perspective of who would you rather be? Oh, okay, of, of course. Of course. Or of course. who would win in a fight? Well, <laughs> okay. first of all, <laughs> I don't know how good that utility belt could be. I mean, really. Well, see, that's the thing, because he's Superman. <laughs> right. You know, and he, he, he's, he's got superpowers. Right. Batman does not have superpowers. No. He's a billionaire who, who uh, is very uh, inventive and has great ideas. And right. And get all of his gadgets. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like Superman. Right. Superman is, is the ultimate superhero. Oh, very yeah, good. Yeah, he's the man. Very good. Yes. Okay, and if you are familiar with, did you see Kill Bill Volume Two? I did. See okay, Kill Bill. the whole speech that David Carradine gives about Superman being that his alter ego is, you know, he he's he's all wakes up wakes up a superhero and has to pretend to be human as opposed to someone like Batman who wakes up human and then puts on a costume to become a superhero. And that's that's sort of what I'm tying this because I feel like opera singers. You know, we are Superman. Like we wake up every day and we're opera singers. So we need to hang out more often. Exactly, I'm saying. <laughs> um, so here's another question. Okay. Uh, we met a few years ago as apprentices uh, at Des Moines Metro Opera, and we haven't worked together no. ever since then. Uh, what? Um, what, what, who was your major influence? And tell us a little bit about how you got onto the path of singing these fantastic lyric tenor roles with such great technique. Well, um, I struggled for a very long time as, as a young artist. And uh, when you knew me mm -hmm. way back in- It wasn't that long ago. It was kind of a long time. 16 <laughs> years ago, I think. We were 12. Yeah, we were 12. Yeah, children's course. Children's course, yeah. Um, uh, when when we knew each other back then, I was I was struggling as an artist and uh, vocally. I being on stage was always something that came very easily to me, mm -hmm. and uh, yet um, singing was a mystery. And it took me a very long time to find my voice. We all have our own journey. Yes, singing. absolutely. Um, mine uh, really began when I met Jerry Hadley. Mm -hmm. uh, he. Uh, became my mentor and taught me absolutely everything that he knew and he changed my life just completely utterly changed my life and uh, since his death in 2007 I have stayed absolute and true to the technique that he taught me and uh, he was right about everything I, I continue to grow and develop mm -hmm. uh, and um, I'm just so grateful for that and Fantastic. and I'm singing roles that that I never in my wildest dreams thought I would sing. Because of you have this, you found your voice right. in, 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 and in many ways, obviously it was a technical journey, but also can you talk a little bit about, and this is, I'm gonna tie this into the last question. Can you talk a little bit about things that you had to let go, mental things that you had to let go? Cause I feel like oh, many yeah. ways artists who struggle have things that they carry with them that then they have to release in order to get to the next level. Can you, like, yeah. mental, like... Sure, two things come to mind. Yeah. One is uh, a, a, a deeper, more personal perspective, and the other is more technical. Mm -hmm. The technical I'll, I'll tackle first. Yes. And that was the idea of placement. Mm -hmm. And I had always been told and drilled into me that uh, you need to place your voice. Mm -hmm. You have to feel the pain <laughs> and raise your soft palate yes. and, and put it in the that mask. You, that, that you have to effort, there has to be an effort in placement as opposed to relying on the natural 
placement of where we speak. Right. Yes, that's, I come from that school of thought as well. Right. Mm -hmm. um, once I started working with Jerry, the, big, the biggest thing that I needed to get over mm -hmm. and realize uh, was that uh, from my own perspective. Right, and every voice is well, different. Every absolutely. instrument is different and needs different things. But I, but I think those of you who are watching this will probably relate to it in, in one form or another, that uh, I was trying to duplicate a sound instead of duplicate a gesture. Mm -hmm. And once I got with that program, with, with understanding the vocal position, mm -hmm. the physicality that you recreate, that that is the consistency in singing. Mm -hmm. Everybody was telling me, your voice needs to sound the same up and down. Right. And it never truly does to the singer. So my teacher, I mean, we're, I mean, we're getting into some very, some very specific things. My teacher's belief is that every uh, note on every vowel has a very specific resonation, mm -hmm. resonating spot, and sure. that there are adjustments that have to be made in order to find that optimal resonating spot. And so, it to me, it doesn't sound the same because I'm really exactly. trying to make the adjustment for the optimal feel mm -hmm. and spin. But then to the I like we I think the basic basically singing on sensation versus trying to create a sound yeah mental for me like the sound that people hear is as a consistent sound is something that's oh okay well this is because what i'm really doing is x y and z and making these adjustments here and it's 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 highly sophisticated and technical but then and yet it's so simple and yet it's very simple yeah because as young singers we don't understand that the the sound that we're getting is only part of the information mm -hmm. it's, it's not the whole truth right and to try to duplicate that sound is what drives singers crazy that's mm -hmm. why we're all nuts yeah <laughs> because we're, we're always trying to find i'm like why don't i sound uh, like blah, right? blah 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 yes exactly right but exactly. once you once i let go mm -hmm. of that perspective and realized that the consistency consistency in singing lied with my body yes my physical stance then everything changed mm -hmm. um so that's that's the technical one yes okay um <clears throat> the second uh is uh the biggest realization i think i had was uh and jerry kept asking me this he kept saying why why are you treating this like it's something that you do and not as opposed to who you are as opposed to who you are mm. and he said you need to accept that <laughs> this is who you are and uh not just something that you do mm -hmm. and uh i mean it's it is it is true in every sense yes to become an artist we really have to give in to that idea yes um it's very vulnerable oh totally. and you have to be uh open to accept that mm -hmm. but but once you do um it just it i found i mean it makes me a better person yeah yeah a more honest a, a happier yeah. more grounded person absolutely because yeah. it like you were saying in many ways we get to work out emotional issues in our lives through our characters yeah and it's it's magical like it, it really really is it really is okay great so the next question have are you a fan of roller coasters and if so what is your favorite roller coaster i love roller coasters I, i've been on 17 of the top 100 roller coasters in the u.s have you been on the king to Ka? Uh, yes Me too. yes it's amazing it's amazing and you did you can't you don't fathom it you, you, your yeah. brain does not work <laughs> that fast and it's like because for those of you who don't know, you got to go check it out. Like yes. YouTube it, check it yeah. out. Yeah, King um, Dakar, and it's at Great Adventure right, in, in, New Jersey. in New Jersey. Yes. We actually just did it this summer. Oh, the kids and, yeah. and Oh, the your kids got I. on it? Oh, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll have to show you. I took before and after pictures. <laughs> and they had so much fun. Okay, good, um, good, good. I love roller coasters. Me too. Right. Awesome. Yeah. See? See, this is why. Yes, we, we get along. Like, this is why the universe brought us together at this yeah. point to reconnect. Yes. See? See? It's amazing. Uh, art brings people together and it's like you get to see how they've grown and matured and it's amazing yeah. so that was question four now question five 
what is your dream role? And if you've already performed it, you know, that's saying it. Or you can even go outside of your fach. Like, would you ever want to sing Lucia or, you know, Wozzeck or, you know, who knows? What, what, what is your, if you could, if somebody yeah. listening to here said, I really like this this man and I want to give him his dream role, what would you say to them? <laughs> I, I am so lucky to have performed my dream role. Which uh, is? Uh, a bunch of times now and it's Don Jose in Carmen yeah um, it's for me mm -hmm. it is he is such a complex character oh of course uh, and I I find that too many times uh, tenors don't go further into his psyche oh. to understand the levels of of um how he views himself. He's a very virtuous man mm -hmm. who has a horrible temper and a mommy issue. Oh, and very much so. Right. Um, but it's the virtue that I think he battles with because he really believes that of himself. Mm -hmm. And that's what does him in in the end. And I love his journey. Mm -hmm. I think it, he's one of the most complex, interesting roles to play. And uh, to sing is like heaven. Yeah, that music is absolutely stunning. And what I love about Jose in many ways, not only emotionally does he have all of these colors, but the amount of vocal colors that you get to bring to that role where it's like one minute he's got this really blood and guts, you know, full throttle singing, but then he has this gorgeous duet with Micaela, which has to have a lot, a lot of lyricism. Yeah and sincerity and virtue in it because he's making a decision or they're having a conversation about making a decision and and you know he i i find it fascinating that you are interested in the acting component because you know oh, yeah. there there's so i mean we, we are in an eighth where you have to be an actor and a singing actor but we still see examples of singers who just kind of like and they just sing and they get right. they get paid a lot of money to do that because they sound like phenomenal but I like that you are delve that you delve into the characters and that's because it really that's what separates us from an instrument absolutely yeah you know? and uh, to get to a point I mean I ne again I never thought I would get to this point but I mean to get to the point where the last Carmen that I did uh, was in Knoxville oh yeah. and I remember finishing uh, opening night and thinking to myself how incredible it feels <laughs> to not have to think about singing <laughs> when I'm playing a role that I mean, yeah. is, is such a challenging role to right. sing, but uh, I feel so lucky.